We're going to switch into health this morning and talk about pain. Now, pain is something that we've all experienced from our first scratch knee to headaches to back aches. We experience it often. Most pain goes away quickly, but some pain stays for weeks, for months, for even years, and that's chronic pain. Chronic pain is a problem. It affects over 116 million Americans. It can be a little tricky to treat as well. We're going to talk about it this morning with Dr. Becky from Brand New Day Enterprises. Dr. Becky, thank you for being back on the show. You're welcome. Thank you very much for asking me. You are very welcome. Um, one of the things, again, that you and I have talked about in the past is, in my practice, many of the patients that come to see me come to see me because of chronic pain. They have gone and done many traditional things um, and didn't get any good long-lasting relief from their pain, so they thought, well, let me go to a wellness center and see if a wellness center might be able to help. Um, and I started doing lots of digging to see what happens that causes some people to get good relief from traditional treatments while others don't. And one of the things I discovered in my research with the Institute of Medicine is that they stated only 45% of patients that are diagnosed with chronic pain are well treated with traditional care, which again, 50, 55% that aren't getting good relief, that's over 60 million people in America that struggle with chronic pain. And I wanted to think, well, what could we do to figure out what's at the crux of this? Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking, okay, well, what are the traditional treatments? NSAIDs is typically the number one treatment protocol. NSAIDs, you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and those are ibuprofens. Um, if those don't work, then the docs might ramp it up and prescribe an anti-seizure medicine, Lyrica being the most common anti-seizure medicine for chronic pain. And again, when I say for chronic pain, Lyrica was not created for a chronic pain patient. They, it is an anti-seizure medicine, but some traditional doctors will prescribe Lyrica. Other doctors will prescribe an antidepressant, thinking that maybe the patients don't have physical pain, but maybe it's more an emotional pain. So they would then prescribe antidepressants. And again, the side effects with the antidepressants are very scary because one, the number one severe side effect to antidepressants are attempted suicide. And so you have to be really, really yeah. careful and cautious. And then of course, the most common thought of traditional medical approach to chronic pain are the narcotics. That's the Percocets, mm -hmm. the Oxycontins, the Oxycodones. And of course, we know the risk of addiction to those medicines are extreme. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you know people, I know I've known many people, significantly successful, highly educated people that had, let's say maybe they had a surgery where they had a scar and that scar didn't heal right and it formed adhesions that led to the chronic pain. So they took the Percocet, the oxycodones, as prescribed. Mm -hmm and then their bodies got addicted to the medicines. Mm -hmm. Again, nobody ever will go in taking a pain med thinking that they're gonna be one of those that mm -hmm. become addicted. Mm -hmm. But again, addiction is a significant risk with the Percocets, the oxycodones. Mm -hmm. And so I started digging deeper thinking, what's going on inside the body that's causing pain in one person, but maybe not in another? That let's say two people in a car accident, both sitting in the car, both same impact, some person will get significant pain with that, others won't. And one of the researches, research articles that I found discovered that patients with chronic pain have less serotonin, less endorphins in their cerebral spinal fluid than somebody that can get over an injury quick. And so then I had to think, what's going on? What would cause one person to have more endorphins mm -hmm. in their cerebral spinal fluid than another? And so what are some of the things I discovered? The fun foundational building blocks of endorphins are potassium, zinc, and iron. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, it made me want to sleuth then another level deeper. What's going on biochemically that would allow one person to have enough potassium, zinc, and iron to have the foundational building blocks versus somebody that didn't? And again, with that research, that's where I got really excited because that's where I discovered, again, with the simple little hair test, that little DNA test, we can look to see, does your body have enough of these foundational building blocks? Mm -hmm. If they don't, 
then the answer might be much, much, much easier mm -hmm. than the traditional community ever even realized. And that's what I've been able to help many, many patients with is when we find out, oh my gosh, you don't have enough, whether it's zinc or potassium or iron, then we know we need to build that up mm -hmm. so that your body can create those endorphins. So instead of just taking all the drugs that you might be prescribed, dig deeper like you did and find right. out what the cause is. That's correct. All right, well, thank you for sharing this information. We're going to talk more about this, though, after our messages right now. We're going to talk about natural treatment options. Okay, yep, yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Stay with us.